Welcome back to Nanny B's Mission Time. Um, this will be day two of Hudson Taylor. Um, and so I know they were not back to back. Please forgive me. Um, things have been kind of crazy around here for the last couple of days. So I will do the next four days today and tomorrow, um, Saturday and Sunday. And so, and then I'll pick up on next week's lesson on Sunday evening. So let's jump in. If y'all remember right, let's review. We're learning about Hudson Taylor, who at a very young age um, wanted to be a missionary to China. And so he's learning how to do that. He's learning medicine because he realized there was a lot of sick people. And so, um, so here we go. So we're going to jump into the story. The previous one is also posted, so y'all can look at it. If you have not heard the first segment of the story, this is the second one. And so here we go. All week long, week after week, Hudson Taylor worked, studied, and helped the busy Dr. Hardy. He was learning a lot about medicine. But he was learning something much more important, too. Every day, for everything, he was learning to trust Jesus. On Sunday afternoons, he walked to the part of the city where the poorest people lived. From one dingy house to another, he went to visit the sick and needy, and he took them medicine. For those who led him, he prayed and read the Bible. He gave out tracts, and to all who would listen, he talked about the Savior and invited Jesus, men and women, to believe in the Lord Jesus. Sometimes some rough men laughed at Hudson. They pushed him around, or they tore up his tracks, or even threw things at him. Yet, he was not afraid. He was learning to trust God to protect him. In China, too, he would have to trust God to keep him from harm. Um, the first few months after Hudson had moved to live in Dr. Hardy's house, home, but then the doctor's family needed the room that they had given him to use. So Hudson moved into a small room in the poor part of the town. God wants me to trust him more and learn to do without certain things. Thought Hudson, he and he wants me to share with uh, what I have with others. Cheerfully, Hudson ate simple meals of the cheapest food. Every penny he could save, he gave to the poor people. The less I spend on myself, the more I can give to the others. The happier I am, and the more blessings I receive. He said, gladly. Hudson learned how to do without expensive food or clothing, but God wanted him to learn to do without what he wanted most and thought he needed. He knew of a pretty Christian um, music teacher named Miss Vaughn. He loved her deeply and believed she loved him too. Often he had talked to her about China. He explained that God wanted him to be a missionary in that country. He thought, she is just the young woman to be my wife and go with me to China. One day he asked her parents if he could marry her. Yes, they answered, but only if you do not go to China. The girl agreed with her parents. Hudson was greatly disappointed. I will wait and hope and pray, he decided. Perhaps she will change her mind. He waited, prayed, and hoped, but it did no good. Should I stay home and marry Miss Vaughn, wondered Hudson. I can be a missionary at home, can't I? No, I have to go. I cannot disobey God. When millions of Chinese still do not know the only way to God, how can I stay in England? God must mean for me to give up Miss Vaughn, and I will. If he wants me to marry, he will give me a wife. So Hudson knew to trust God about this too. Hudson wished he could leave for China soon. Whenever he thought of all the Chinese who did not know that God's love, of God's love and that he saved sinners, he was so sad. In a letter to his mother, he wrote, I long to be a missionary. I feel as if I cannot live if something is not done for China. Yet, before I go to China, I must learn to trust God more and more, thought Hudson. I'll be far from home with no one to help me. I must learn to trust God for everything. I'll have to trust him to put into people's hearts to pray for me and to help me. Before I can go, I must practice trusting God here. How else could Hudson practice trusting God? Dr. Hardy and the poor people in Hull didn't know it, but they all helped him. You see, Dr. Hardy was forgetful. Sometimes he forgot to pay Hudson. Remind me when it's time for your salary, he said. But Hudson didn't want to do that. He made up his mind that he would pray and God would make the doctor remember to pay him. Uh, 
I'm forgetful too. But I would like for my boss to be able to remember when they're supposed to give me a paycheck. Oh, all right. Uh, one day it was time for the doctor to pay him and the doctor forgot. All Hudson had left in his pocket was a half a crown, which equaled in England about 60 cents. Right at that time, a very poor man came to Hudson. Will you come and pray for my wife, he asked. She is dying. Hudson rushed off with the man to the dirty little room where his family lived. In it, there were three half-starved children, a new little baby, and the sick woman. It was such a sad sight. Hudson knelt by the sick woman and prayed for her, and as he prayed, he remembered the half-crown in his pocket. He, How could he pray and ask God to help these people if he was not willing to help them himself? If I, if you can help us, for God's sake, do, begged the poor man. The Bible verse, give to him that asketh thee, flashed through Hudson's mind. Down into his pocket went Hudson's hand, and out came his last coin. Here, he said to the poor man, take this. He gave away all the money he had. That was what God had wanted him to do. He walked back to his little room with a happy heart. There he knelt and asked the Lord to send him some money to buy his lunch the next day. He climbed into bed, trusting God to give him the money that he needed. How would God do it? He would just wait and see. Morning came, and as he ate his oatmeal, the postman arrived. He brought Hudson a letter. It did not say whom it was from, and he did not recognize the handwriting. Eagerly, he opened the envelope. Inside a blank sheet of paper, he found a pair of gloves. He unfolded them and stared. Out of them fell a half a, a, a sovereign, which was about two fifty. Now y'all gotta remember this is a long time ago, so two fifty, even sixty cents was a good amount, but two dollars and fifty cents was uh, um, enough at least for his lunch. And so uh, Hudson rejoiced. The Lord has given me back four times as much money as I gave away. It is enough to buy food for two weeks. I cannot imagine buying food for two weeks for two dollars and fifty cents. Oh, so, but God provided, and so uh, he he could have shouted and danced for joy. Who had sent the money? He had no idea. God had caused someone to send it. He praised and thanked God for the gloves, the money, and for the person who gave them. And that wasn't all. God had also answered his prayer for the dying woman. She lived and got well. How wonderful God rewarded Hudson's trust in him. Two weeks by, again, Hudson was without money. The doctor still had not remembered to pay him. It was Saturday, the day the Hudson, the day for Hudson to pay his rent. That afternoon, the doctor said, By the way, isn't your salary due? <laughs> yes, sir, announced Hudson, hopefully. Oh, I am sorry. You didn't remind me, said the doctor. Only this afternoon, I... I sent all the money I had to the bank. Hudson's heart sank. Would God disappoint him? It looked as if he might. All the rest of the day, Hudson prayed as he worked. Evening came. It got later and later. At last, it was time to go to his room. He still had no money. Hudson put on his coat and got ready to leave. And then the doctor came in chuckling merrily. At this late hour, one of the richest patients had come to pay his bill. How strange. The man could have waited, but he felt he had to come and pay his bill right away. So the forgetful doctor could pay to Hudson after all, because the other, all the other money was in the bank. With a thankful heart, Hudson hurried home and paid his rent. God had answered another prayer. Now surely it will not be long before God will send me to China, thought Hudson. If he answers my prayers and takes care of me like this in England, I can trust him to do it in China too. Hudson prayed and asked God if this was the time to go, but it was not yet God's time. Instead, the Lord showed him that the next he should go to medical college in London. Until God made it plain that he was to sail for China, he should study and wait. Soon Hudson was busy studying and working in the hospital at the college. Then something happened. I'm not gonna make it. Hold on, <laughs> got to change. After touching the body of a man who had died of a dreadful fever, Hudson got sick. <coughs> Go home as fast as you can and get your things in order," said the doctor. "You are going home to die." The doctor was certain that Hudson would be soon dead. 
Do you think the doctor's words frightened Hudson? How would it have felt if it had been you? What would you have done? Hudson looked at the doctor calmly. I don't think I shall die, he said. I have work to do in China. But if I should die, it would be wonderful. I would go to be with my Savior. Then as quickly as he could, Hudson got to his room. Every minute he felt worse, and by the time he reached his room, he was very ill. It looked as if he might never get to China. Night, days and nights of suffering crept slowly by, but God was watching over Hudson. He did not let him die. After many weeks, Hudson was well again and could go back to study in medicine. Not long afterwards, good news came from China. It was reported that well, the right time was now for missionaries to go there. Now I believe that God is ready for me to go, thought Hudson excitedly. He hurried to visit his friend at the Missionary Society office. I am ready to sail for China any time, he said. The man looked at him in amazement. Why, I have just finished writing a letter to you asking if you are ready to go. See, holding up the letter. Here it is. God had made both of them think the same thoughts at the same time. It seemed to them that this meant that it was now God's timing for Hudson to leave for China. Isn't it good that Hudson had learned to trust God for everything, even to show him just when to leave? Joyfully, 21-year-old Hudson packed his clothes and books. He said goodbye to his friends and family, and on September 19, 1853, he boarded a sturdy little ship named Dumfries and sailed away toward China. It looked as if the prayers of Mother and Father Taylor were being answered after all. The boy who had said, when I grow up, I'll be a missionary and go to China, was now grown up and on a ship, headed for that strange country. But China was thousands of miles away. A trip in a sailing ship was slow and dangerous. Even before the small vessel had gotten far from land, it ran into a violent storm. Furious howling winds and huge foaming waves threatened to drive it against the jagged rocks. Somehow the crew managed to guide the ship away from the rocks and save it. Another time, there was no wind at all to fill the ship's sails. So there can be a bad thing with too much wind and another thing with no wind. So at this time, there was no wind and a strong swift current began to carry it toward rocks and ridges and sand just under the water. The captain and the crew worked hard to turn the ship away from the rocks. As they moved dangerously close, the captain stood with Hudson and watched helplessly. Well, we have done everything that we can do. He said helplessly, we can only wait for what's going to happen. Suddenly, Hudson had an idea. No, captain, there's one thing we have yet to be done. What is that? asked the startled captain. What do you think Hudson's idea was? You will hear about it next time and find out if it worked. So, here's your questions to see if you listened. While Hudson Taylor studied to become a doctor, he learned about something more important than medicine. What was it? He learned he had to trust God to supply all of his needs. Um, do missionaries today need to trust the Lord Jesus as much as Hudson did? Why do you think so? Well, I believe yes, um, even more so, because now some of the countries where we have missionaries going is very dangerous for them to go, not just on a trip. You know, now you can get on a plane and, and or a train and go where you need to go. But once you get there, it can be so much more dangerous. And so, um, but they still have to go through. They still have to trust the Lord. They still have to have um, their needs met and they still need people praying for them. Um and then Satan, God's enemy, works very hard on those that are trying to spread the gospel of Jesus. And so he doesn't like it. So there is that battle also. Third question, how did God help Hudson to know just the time he wanted him to leave for China? Do y'all remember? So he got word and his missionary society friend. And when he arrived at the mission office, both of them had the same thought at the same time that now was the time to go. And his friend at the mission office had already written him a letter that he was about to deliver. And so, um, which is, which is just amazing. I mean, we serve an amazing, awesome, wonderful God. Um, what happened shortly after the small sailing vessel set out on the voyage to China? 
So first there was a storm and too much wind that was pushing into rocks. And now they have no wind and the current is about to carry them into the rocks and the sand and those kind of things. Um, what would you have done if this had happened to you? Well, me, I would probably have been panicking going, oh my good, you know, running around being fretful. So we will find out tomorrow, <laughs> um, on what happens with the ship and how does it, what happens to it. And so join tomorrow uh, and I will see you and we will find out a little bit more about Hudson Taylor and his journey to China. See you then. Bye.